Good morning to all of you on Facebook as you join us here at the Corner Church in Big Hook Tannery for our message this morning. We have God glory and praise and thanksgiving. This morning I'm going to begin with the scripture in the uh, Gospel of Matthew. Gospel of Matthew, I'll find out what chapter it is. Chapter 7, I believe. Hi, Adriana. I hear you back there. Praise the Lord. Yes, uh, chapter 7. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we praise you this morning. Father, we thank you and give you glory and thanksgiving, Father, for all things, Father. And Father, as we gather this morning, Father, to come to your word, Father, for you to speak to us through your word, Father. Your word, that Father, is truth, the only truth, the only truth in all the entire world. And Father, at this time, Father, in the world and in our nation, Father, Father, this morning, Father, we do, as we had on our prayer list this morning, all those needs of the sick and all of those things of lost ones, Father. But Father, topping that list this week, we've lifted up our country, Father, our nation, Father, not only is there unrest and turmoil in our nation, uh, Father, but there's also that same unrest and turmoil in the world. And it all comes from the same cause. It all comes from the same cause. And that's that cause of the evil that's in the world, which we rebuke in the name of Jesus. Father, we plead the name of Jesus and his precious atoning blood over our nation. And Father, as our nation goes to the polls on this coming Tuesday, Father, we just... Put that all into your hands, Father, as we thank you and praise you, Father. Because, Father, with you all things are possible, nothing is impossible. And Father, we know, Father, that your will will be done. So, Father, this morning, Father, we just pray for enlightenment, Father, as we come to your word. Because everything that we need to know, Father, is in your word. And Father, through your word, you also show us everything that is to come. So, Father God, I pray for that enlightenment by your Holy Spirit. Quicken our hearts and minds, Father, as only you can do. Father God, I yield and humble myself to lean of your Holy Spirit, that it might be your words and not mine, through thy Holy Son, Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. And praise the Lord, this morning I'm probably going to, I don't know where the Lord's going to lead us, but probably going to have more scripture, even though I normally have a lot of scripture. Uh, might have more scripture this morning than normal. Uh, it's not my word that anybody needs to hear. The only word that we need to hear is the word of God. The word of God, and that is totally the beginning and the end. The scripture this morning talks about, in chapter 7, First of all, in verse 7, I'm going to read a couple of verses and then jump down a little bit. Verse 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. See, the word tells us that if we go to God, He knows our needs, and He's just waiting for us to come to Him. Verse 11, If ye did me an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things unto them that ask him? Praise God. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them, for this is the law of the prophets. Now, verse 13, this is where things get very important. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go, which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And then, as a result of that, as we get on over to verse 19, Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. 
Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, sh shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto you, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And then I'm going to turn over to chapter 25. Chapter 25 of Matthew, beginning at verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto him on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. Praise the Lord. The sheep on one side and the goats on the other side. Verse 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. Verse 45. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not for the least of these, you did it not for me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into the life eternal. To life eternal. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because, as the scripture says, blessed are they who are called to the marriage feast of the Lamb. And that's why earlier when I was saying about a funeral versus the wedding, in reality, if we're a Christian, they all tie together because we say goodbye to this world. God, thou good and faithful servant, what a blessing. But what we have going on in the world today is so dire and in our nation, I would say, in some ways, even more dire because the scripture tells us that when we've heard the word, even though all are without excuse, when we have heard the word, we are more without excuse. And we live in a country that was founded as a Judeo-Christian country. But as I said in those devotionals that I sent out from Monday through yesterday, in any of those devotionals, I just make a point. If you haven't read those, each one of those this past week, go back and read them. All of you on Facebook, I have a public page, and you can look it up all on public page if you haven't read them this week. Because it's all about what's taking place right now. If we go back to 2 Thessalonians, and this is why I'm going to use a lot of scripture again this morning, because again, it's not what I have to say. Even though I pray that I don't say one word except by the leading of the Holy Spirit. But God's word in the scripture has already told us these things. Second Thessalonians, Paul is writing them a letter. And in the first chapter, he's talking about how he knows that they're troubled on every side. But he also then, in about the middle of that, verse 8, he says, Verse 7, and to you that are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel 
of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of power. We read that in Matthew. Then he shall come, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all of them that believe because our testimony among us was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of his calling. Should we all appear before the judgment tree to answer for everything that we've done, whether it be good or bad. Worthy of his calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. That the name of Jesus may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And earlier, I think the last week we had it in the, the, those devotionals. At that day, every knee will bow. I just pray that each and every one of us, that we won't be in that place that we can't cross over. Because even those in hell will bow to the name of Jesus. The devil knows the name of Jesus. He just doesn't follow Jesus. Verse 3 of chapter 2. Let no man be deceived. De let no man deceive you by any means that that day shall not come, except there be a falling away in first and that that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. See, for that day to come, there is going to be a mass falling away. Now, my question is, what do we see today? What do we see in this very country that we live in, this nation? This falling away that has been taking place now for several decades, several decades. Each and every day, something new. Each and every day, something that just boggles your mind. And you say, how can we allow and condone these things? See, different times, I've talked about the things that our churches have left in the door in their doctrines, in their teachings. I've talked, we've had in the service, some of the letters to the churches in Revelation. And in each one of those churches, God, Jesus has a word for them that they know they've done this and this, but then there'll be some that said, I have somewhat against you. He told the one church, thou has a name, a name and only. It's not the name from God. We chose to write Christian on our face, but we're far from being a Christian, is what he's saying. Thou has a name, but thou art dead. But then go and strengthen that which still remains before it does die, because it is ready to die. Unless we take that firm stand, that firm stand that Jesus was talking about in the, you know, the other church. You're lukewarm. Oh, yes, you believe in the name of Jesus. You don't follow Jesus. You're lukewarm. Because we follow the world. We accept the ways of the world. The churches and denominations that continue to change their, their script, their uh, doctrine, because there's itching ears in the congregation and they want, they want the money in the offering plate but they're not willing to preach the truth. So they change the doctrine to accept the ways of the world. Something that sometimes some people might have thought would be, oh, that would never happen. The Pope, this past week, has accepted same-sex unions. Now, 
regardless of what the denomination is. Sometimes in the Protestant churches, sometimes there's somewhat of a unacceptance of the Catholic faith. But see, it's not those that belong to the Catholic faith, it's what's being taught and preached. But that's the pulpit of any church. It's what's being taught, it's what's being preached, it's the Word of God being preached. As far as the Catholic Church, Christianity started in the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church was the first church. But then there was divisions because of corruption in, in the church. But at the same time, where that Pope accepts the same-sex civil unions, a bishop, even speaking to a candidate for president, said that he was not in good standing because he accepts the murder and killing and the infant side that takes place to the the unborn in the womb. This week I talked about in one of the things about the amount of abortions that's taken place. And that was really one of the biggest things of, of, you know, of accepting and approving a woman that is Catholic but very devout Christian that abhors personally the thought of abortion yeah. And then somebody just guy, well, that's one type. Yeah. Well, there is. So there's two types of Christians. I don't care what denomination it is. Get past the denomination and get to our faith. Do we believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? The only begotten Son of God who shed his blood on the cross, died for our sins, took victory over death through the resurrection that we might have eternal life. Are we a Christian? Are we a Christian? Is that what we stand for? Because there are two types of Christians. There's Christians in name only, but then there's Christians in faith and trust in God. See, we can learn a lot when we go back to the history of God's people. We are God's people. We are God's people. I want you to turn back to Isaiah just for a moment in Isaiah chapter 44. Because when we really see what has taken place in the world, we see it taking place right now. If you remember, Judah, after the nations were split, you know, Israel went their way and they, you know, they, they ended up, you know, having so many idols, but you know, Judah was still, you know, the remaining portion because Jesus, the son of David, would come out of Judah. And he shows the branch of where we come from as a Christian. But Judah then also started worshiping because they followed the ways of Balaam because Balaam had taught them how to have fornication and everything with the Moabite women and this and that. I just want to stop there for one moment. Sins of the body, God points them out in a much more explicit way, but sin is sin. I don't care what the sin is. See, there's right, right, right and wrong. There's white and black. You can't go to shades of gray, whether it's a sin or not. It's either God's will or it's not. When I'd walked into the closet, when I did, I, you know, I would ended up wearing a white shirt. With, you know, I don't wear that often. I used to wear it day in and day out. Then I went to go to one of the other ties and said, no, this time, black and white. You know, black and white. I even started putting on a different jacket that had some shades of gray in it. I took it back off and put this one on. See, in our life, things are either black or white when it comes to our relationship with God. Yeah. 
We was talking about, oh, are you washed in the blood? Are you pure and spotless? Or is there a lot of sin stain, the darkness in her life? Judah had gotten to worshiping idols. But there was so much fornication also that had taken place, which is so prevalent throughout the world today. And as a result of that, he allowed them to be captured and carried off to Babylon. Babylon was probably the country of all the countries of the most idol worshippers that existed. And in the end, they wanted to worship idols. God, let them, God allowed them to be captured and to see what pure, total, nothing but idol worshiping is. And they got carried off to Babylon. They actually got carried off in three stages. Well, I think of what's taken place in the United States. We've been invaded and we are getting carried away into that world of sin more and more and more every day. But as I've been talking this week in the devotional, about four years ago, well, not about four years ago, we started on a road to recovery and a returning to God. But some people would ask the messenger that God would use to do this. I think we can get some understanding of that as I go back here to Isaiah. In fact, I said uh, chapter 44. I want to back, back up a little bit to verse 21. Remember the uh, chapter 44, verse 21. Remember thee, O Jacob and, uh, and Israel, for thou art my servant and have form, formed thee Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. When we've accepted Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, we are God's children. And we, he will not forget us. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains. O forest and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. You can say glorified himself in the church. And in our day and age, the church is Israel. Thus saith the Lord, thy redeemer and he that formed thee from the womb. See, from the womb, I was talking this week, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of God. And that's why these sins of the flesh is even more grievous because God lives in us. And in the sins of the flesh, we make God participate in that if we claim to be a Christian. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretches forth, the heavens alone, that spread up the broad, the earth by myself, that frustrated the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish. See, that's what we see going on right now, and let me tell you, you know, their sins have been pointed out. Their way of life has been pointed out. The ungodliness of it been pointed out, and they are mad. They are fighting back because they know that we're on a road to correct these wrongs that our nation has taken place. You know, our Judeo-Christian founding of the country, our democracy, our Bill of Rights. It's all being attacked. The way of life. The Christian teachings. 
the willing, the, the ability to, of freedom of worship, even to the point that you're not supposed to say Merry Christmas, but praise the Lord, we are saying Merry Christmas again. Not in a broad path, but it's coming back. Yes, and that started about four years ago. Verse 26, that confirmeth the word of his servant, performeth the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited, and the cities of Judah ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. Praise God, hallelujah. See, God can raise it up again as he rebuilt Jerusalem later. How did they rebuild Jerusalem? How did they rebuild the temple? With Zerubbabel and those? Well, let's keep on reading. That saith to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up the rivers. Now this next verse begins it. And before I even read the second word, uh, the fourth word of this scripture, verse, I want to tell you something and listen to this. This is being written. This is being prophesied 150 years before it took place. 150 years before this person was born. That saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and thou shalt perform all my pleasures, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built in the temple the foundation shall be laid. The foundation shall be laid. Thus saith the Lord, listen to this word now, anointed. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings and open before him the two leave gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee. I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass, and I will uh, cut and sunder the bars of iron. The Lord is using his anointed. Now, I'm going to fill this in kind of quickly for you. The anointed of Cyrus that was prophesied 150 years before was going to be the king of Persia that was going to come down and capture Babylon. Now God was going to deal with Babylon through this because Babylon is the country that did what God wanted them to do because God wanted the chastening to take place of Israel, that's why they were carried into Babylon for 70 years. It was chastening. It was correction. You know. But because Babylon was the instrument that killed them and carried them off into slavery, God was going to use the, P the Persians and the Medes to come and conquer Babylon. And again, the, the Persians and the Medes were not Christian people. But they were going to bring God's vengeance on Babylon. And it was Darius and Cyrus that, in, that instituted the ability to go back and, and then have the Israelites to go back in phases to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall, to rebuild the temple to return all of the stolen plates and silver and gold and everything that was out of there. Do you think for one minute that Darius and Cyrus were devout Christians? No. He the nation. And God used them. See, as I said in that one devotional, Sometimes we have to get past looking at the personality and the ways that an individual speaks. 
What we always have to look for is the working of God. Four years ago, I told some of you this. Yes, I went to the polls and voted like this. Because when I went to the polls and voted, that was somewhat the way I felt about the situation. The one thing that I knew I could do, not do is I knew I could not vote the other way because everything, and I said this this week in those devotionals, when we vote, we are you know, lifting up and agreeing and promoting the things that that platform stands on. And stands for. Right to life. Or right to choose. Do we believe in the right to life? I mentioned this week. Almost a million babies a year in this country are boarded. Almost 30% of every pregnancy is aborted. 40% of every black pregnancy is aborted. 40%. I heard some figures that right now, if those black pregnancies had been allowed, they would be double their percent of representation in the United States today. Do those lives matter? Do those lives matter? There's all those in the womb. Because I read back there a while ago, Jesus, God said, I formed you in the womb. And that life in the womb is to be the temple. And God would use the king, Cyrus, called him his anointed to bring freedom to his people. Yes. Sometimes there's some language that I'd rather not hear. But look what's happening. And look what the platform is and look what they stand for. They stand for freedom of worship. They stand for the freedom of the rights. They stand for life. Against life is against God. Against God is Antichrist. The scripture tells us there are many Antichrists today in the world. And that's what the real battle is that's going on right now. This election, that is what the decision is. Are we for God or are we against God? <clears throat> Do we agree with prayer out of the schools? Do we agree with the fact that you're not allowed to say Christian Jesus in the public square? Do you agree that you should not have the Ten Commandments on the courthouse walls? or in the public square. We have to stand up. And that's why I mentioned earlier one of those devotionals, like that old song, Stand Up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. Are we willing to stand up? Do we want to be the sheep on God's right hand or do we want to be the goats on his left hand? Depart from me. I never knew you. Yes. There's two types of Christianity. Christianity in name and a child of God. A child of Jesus. The one who loved us so much that he laid down his life and shed his blood for the remission and forgiveness of our sins. The one who loved us so much it took victory over death itself and descended back to heaven to be seated at the right hand of God. And then because of that, God 
would send to each and every one of us to have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. His Holy Spirit, His indwelling Holy Spirit to enlighten us so that we can know the truth because it's only the truth that will set us free. The truth and the truth alone. We have gone into bondage in this country and we didn't even realize it because it came a little bit at a time. And then maybe sometimes in our younger years we said, well, this is not so bad. Romans chapter 1 where it says he gives some over for a retrobate mind and goes on down and talks about he says, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affections, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. See, carnally we know that with this mind. But not only do the same, but have pleasure and them that do it. You see, even how it crept into all the things that we sometimes have for entertainment. Movies and songs. And we just have pleasure in it. And watching it. You know. See, Paul said, be transformed by the renewing of the mind. We have to be a new creature in God. And yes, we have a leader that with any shadow of doubt, I believe that God has placed where he's at. And I told you I went to the polls, but that night, when I started watching the polls and the returns, and about nine o'clock, I didn't even do the normal thing of looking everything up on the computer and seeing what this place is doing, that place is doing, everything, because I was just, you know, just passive, you know, just casually looking at it. And all of a sudden, I realized something and said, praise God, hallelujah, something's happening here. And then as the night went on, And I remember Chris Wallace saying, I don't know, but we might be looking at a Trump presidency. And that's when I started seeing God at work. God at work. He had been at work before and was building to that point. But now we're on the road. They are mad. They are angry. They are fighting back. Are we going to stand our ground? Are we going to stand firm on the solid rock? Are we going to stand up for Jesus? And shout, hallelujah and praise God. Are we going to be on our knees and praying for our nation? Are we going to be thanking God knowing that with God all things are possible and nothing is impossible. Because a day of reckoning is coming. And it's up to each and every one of us. But in Jesus, we walk in victory. Praise God, hallelujah. No weapons formed against us shall prosper. And I do all things through Christ which strengthen me for greater as he is in me than he is in the world. Now, God loves this country because God had a hand in founding this country because this country was primarily founded with that desire for freedom to worship. And that very basic freedom has been taken away. As I said earlier, there's all kinds of bondage as it shows in the scriptures. 
Rehoboam was harder on him than what his father was. He put heavy taxes on him. Now, see, in the last four years, we've even been released from those burdens so much. Are we going to continue on this path, this course of freedom through Jesus, our Lord and Savior? Father God, we glorify you. Father, we praise you and thank you. Father, we thank you and praise you for your mighty hand. Father, we give you glory and praise and thanksgiving of how you've unleashed the power of your Holy Spirit into our nation, Father. And Father, how you've been able to, to overturn things because with you all things are possible. Nothing is impossible. Father, if we just put our faith and trust in you. When we you know, go to the polls, do we stand up for you? Or we just, do we stand up for the foolishness and the wickedness and the evil of the world? There is only one answer. It is a white and black answer. It's no in between. So Father God, we trust you, Father, in all things. But Father God, above all things, we praise you and thank you, Father, for our salvation through our Lord and Savior. And your word says if we just but call on the name of Jesus, you will answer our prayers. You will provide that need. So Father God, I just pray that by your Holy Spirit, Father, your Holy Spirit, Father, would quicken all of those in our nation that call themselves Christians. They know you, Father. But Father, quicken your word within each and every spirit and soul heart. Father, quicken your word, Father, that those things that are within them while they still have that name are that are about to die. Father, those that are lukewarm. As I talked before, Father, you know, about you know, trying to have one foot in the church, but just a, I mean, uh, one foot in the world, but just a tiptoe in the kingdom of God. Let us be firmly planted on the solid rock, firmly in the, in the kingdom of God. Father, we truly do glorify you and we praise you. But Father, we thank you for all things, Father, because we know as we draw near to you, you draw near to us. We worship you this morning, Father. We glorify your name. We praise you, Father, in all things. Father, I ask, Father, your prayer, Father, our prayer, Father, for you to you know, touch each and every life that's in our country today, Father, and bring that revelation, truth, and knowledge that can truly set us free and bring that peace that Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give, give unto you. Father, that peace, your peace, that truly passes all understanding. Father, because without you solely in control of our lives, we have no peace. Father, I just worship you and praise you and thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to close with, I am, I need the every hour. 478. Jesus Christ is that drew the line in my mind to tell me what 
he believed in. And this week, I want you all, until after this is over, because we're going to really have some turmoil, and you all know it's coming. Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, that's Elion, that's God, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, that's El Shaddai, that's the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snares of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers. Do you think God has feathers? Or do you think the angels have feathers? So who is he sending out to take care of you and protect you? So we need to dwell in that secret place so that we know where our help comes from because we're going to need it this week. You know, whatever happens, we're still going to need it this week. Amen. That's, that scripture continues, under his wings thou shalt trust in his truth. His word shall be thy shield and buckler. God's word. Praise the Lord. So we're singing that. We do need Jesus. We need God. Every moment, every hour of every day. And even in that third verse, it says, I need thee every hour in joy or pain. See, sometimes when we enjoy, we think we don't need God anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But regardless of what's taken out, the inclination is, is only in pain that we call on the Lord. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I really need you today. This is really hurting. Yeah. But see, even in joy, when we think we just, all kind of manna from heaven has fallen on us. We still need him. We still need him. Come quickly and abide, see, or life is vain. See, there's only one purpose for this world's life. That before we draw that last breath, 
that there is a wedding following. The funeral, but there's a wedding following. Praise God with our Lord and Savior. The church is the bride. And see, if that wedding is not following, this whole life was in vain. I need thee every hour. Let's sing it twice, of course. Praise the Lord. All we have to do is call upon the name of Jesus. I need thee. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus our Lord and Savior. To him be glory and honor forever and ever. Through the Holy Son Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go in peace and vote.